Live from the Washington, D.C. area, it's the Inside Scoop, all the news that our viewers want to know. Now, here's the host. Hi, folks. Cesar Delagula here, your host. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. We have a really, really good show this evening. In fact, a very serious topic. And I've got quite a few guests, and we're going to go right into it. Um, it's an important topic because I think it affects a lot of people that don't know they're being affected. Uh, particularly here in Virginia, we have um, some gun laws that uh, this person, I personally think we need to make a little bit more sensible. And I've invited people from all sides of the aisle. I'll introduce you to our first guest here, Katrina Heinz, with the campaign, the Brady campaign to prevent gun violence. Did I get that right? It's actually Martina, Martina but you got the Brady campaign to prevent I'm, gun violence. Just Martina, right. I apologize, I and, and I've said your name three or four times, so thank you so much. Tell us a little bit, before we get into the actual organization, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about why you're doing what it is you're doing. What, what got you excited? What got you involved? What got you sort of engaged in the issue? Well, in 2000, a woman named Donna Dees Thomases was fed up with gun violence in the United States and decided that we needed to do something about it. And she organized the very first Million Mom March. Okay. And people came from all over the country to participate in that event. And I joined them. And I've been an activist ever since for 14 years. But the real genesis of it was when I was in high school in San Diego, one of my classmates in 1979 mm -hmm. perpetrated a school shooting, mm -hmm. one of the first, not at our high school, but at the elementary school across the street from her house. Oh. It was really a horrible story. Her father had bought her a 22 caliber sniper rifle for Christmas, wow. even though she was a very disturbed young woman. Mm -hmm. And she opened up her bedroom window one Monday morning and started shooting at the children as they entered the school. Oh. She killed the principal, a janitor, and injured nine people, including eight children and one police officer who responded to the scene. So really, wow. my awareness of this issue was raised at a very young age. Mm -hmm. Wow, I'm, I'm absorbing that. That's, that's pretty incredible. What, um, what is it about the organization? What is, give us sort of a priority as of what they're trying to accomplish. What's your, in, in your best of all worlds, what would you like to see happen? Well, to put it most succinctly, what we really want is to have a nation where our children can live free mm -hmm. of gun violence. Mm -hmm. um, we want to keep dangerous weapons out of the hands of dangerous individuals. Mm -hmm. And we believe that there are several ways that we can do that. Um, and our three major campaigns are all centered around that. Um, the first is a campaign called Finish the Job. Mm -hmm. 20 years ago, the Brady Background Check Bill was passed mm -hmm. through both houses of Congress. And it's been incredibly effective. Over a million illegal purchases of guns have been stopped mm -hmm. because of mm -hmm. the Brady Bill. But there are huge loopholes in the bill because you can buy a gun from an unlicensed seller right. Right. At, a, at a gun show or over the internet, no questions asked, no background check. Right. So we really need to make universal background checks. And um, this is the Mansion Toomey Bill in the Senate. Um, and it came very close to passing. It did pass with the majority, it just didn't have a filibuster-proof majority. Right. So, so that really right. needs to happen at sure. the federal level. Mm -hmm. That really needs to happen. The second major campaign is called Ask. Mm -hmm. Asking Saves Kids. Okay. And it's a public education program to help parents understand how vitally important it is that they ask the parents of the homes where their children play if they have guns and mm -hmm. if they have them if they keep them locked and unloaded sure. because we hear every day in this country of children stumbling upon an yeah. unlocked gun Accident. and accidentally yeah. Yeah. shooting themselves yeah. or others oh. So that's a very important campaign. So th is that still at the federal level that you're pushing Well, that, that I mean, that's, that's a campaign that works locally, it mm -hmm. works in states and nationally because it's just public education. It's not trying to move any legislation. It's mm -hmm. just empowering parents to take their children's safety into mm -hmm. their own hands by asking these very important questions. Okay. Um, so bring it back to Virginia. Mm -hmm. um, so we have two senators. 
I'll assume they're supportive of this? Both both of our senators have Perfect. supported the background check bill, okay. and we know we can count on their support when it comes back up for a vote again. Okay. Um, in particular, Senator Kane has been a very vocal advocate for sensible gun laws, and mm -hmm. he is a champion on this issue. Good. He was when he was governor, um, and he is as our senator. Okay. Now, uh, again, talk state level. Um, senators or, or other House representatives, are you working with or would you like to sort of target specific senators to perhaps maybe promote this or push this uh, initiative? Well, in addition to the, the federal bills that we'd like to see happen, of course, mm -hmm. we'd like to have things happen at the state level as well. So we'd love to have Virginia's universal. Virginia's tough, that's why I'm asking. Virginia's right. tough, Virginia's mm -hmm. tough. But we really feel that these are public safety issues and mm -hmm. they should not be political issues. Mm -hmm. And both sides of the aisle should come together and seek compromise and solution to keep our children and our families and our communities safe. Mm -hmm. Have you reached out to uh, Governor McAuliffe, his staff? Or, Governor or? McAuliffe and his entire cabinet are outstanding proponents for sensible gun violence Good. measures, Good. and they fully support initiatives that will make our state one of the safest in the country. And um, hopefully, we'll get something done in this next mm -hmm. legislative session. It is tough. It is a mm -hmm. climate that's not um, not has been very good on this issue. Mm -hmm. So let's let's focus a little bit about Virginia's inability to, I mean the NRA is headquartered here, correct? So there's a very, very big presence of their message, you know, their membership. What What is the single biggest obstacle that you hear or the pushback you hear when you want to talk about a sensible law. What's sort of the positioning on the other side that says no or becomes an obstacle? What, what's sort of the messaging from the other side? Well, the messaging basically is they want any type of gun anywhere, anytime. They don't want any regulations whatsoever. No they don't want to checks. see no background mm -hmm. checks. They don't want any type of legislation. And it's, so it's really hard to um, find a middle ground when they won't budge at all. And, and what, why, why do you, and I'm asking you to read their minds, and I know that's a tough thing, but maybe just think about, help me or the viewers understand what, and if viewers are out there, by the way, if, if you want to call in, um, we have, we'll put up the, the number to call in and certainly get your perspective. As I said, I've asked uh, for folks to come on the show, but, the other side, do they feel that you know the government's going too big, or people are coming to take their guns away? I mean, I, I just I, I'm trying to understand it. I don't well, I don't get it. The, I think it's important to understand first that there's a real distinction between if we say the gun lobby and the NRA mm -hmm. and their membership. Mm -hmm. Because we know that the majority of the members of the NRA also believe in sensible gun control measures like. Mm -hmm background checks sure. because we don't, we all have an interest in keeping guns out of the hands of criminals sure, right oh, absolutely so it's not a membership issue it's a leadership issue and so many of the members of their board are so tied into the gun industry and it's all about profits for them they want to be able to sell guns to everybody and they don't care if they're sure. being sold to criminals yeah so, and then obviously that that industry basically perpetuates itself. It's not just guns, it's the ammunition, it's the accessories and, and the whole nine yards. Right. So in terms of the individual that may or may not be on the fence, let's just assume there's a few people that are on the fence. What's, what's the one thing you want them to know or understand about your cause, your initiative, that may help with maybe them understanding why this is a very important issue for not just themselves, but their kids, their sure. neighbors. Well, I mean, the statistics are so alarming. We have over 32,000 Americans killed by guns every year. Mm. Every day we have children dying from guns. Mm. Um, and it's just not okay. We're and the only developed nation that has numbers like that. Yeah, I saw, I saw one stat, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, of the murders committed in the U.S., I think the number, uh, with with a, a gun um, being being used, and, and and again, don't don't I am recalling the number was like fifty four some thousand. Compare that to other countries. Uh, I think Japan had one murder um, with a gun in 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 this time frame. 
So it's it's certainly a cultural thing, but I, I'm still um, I'm still tr I struggle with trying to understand why people feel they need not just one or two, but an arsenal uh, wow. for for home protection. I just I don't I don't get that, and I don't get that either. You know, I mean, most I of mean, us. I, 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 I don't understand it. And Do you think people would be more receptive to, like we have zoning laws, right? And, and when you develop mm -hmm. land and things, you, you know, you have density here. Do you think people are accepting of, well, if you live in a very dense zoned city, maybe you can have some sensible gun laws there as opposed to if you're rural, maybe you don't necessarily need to apply those. I mean, it just, it seems to me there's got to be a way to meet a middle ground with some of these folks. Well, background checks is that middle ground mm -hmm. because if you're a law-abiding citizen, you're not going to be prevented from buying whatever gun you want. Right. It's right. just making sure that dangerous people, criminals and gang members and terrorists and domestic abusers mm -hmm. and the adjudicated mentally ill, that they can't get their hands on weapons. You know, it's interesting that you say that because there's, in Virginia, um, felons, when they've served their time through the prison system, do not get their right to vote. It's not automatically reinstated. But technically, they can go out and purchase a handgun mm -hmm. at these shows, mm -hmm. or something even more powerful and deadly. Mm -hmm. So that's a major disconnect. Why, why don't people understand that? Why don't people get that it's typically the repeat offender that we're trying to target here. As you said, if, if you and I want to go purchase guns, we, we ha we're law-abiding, I think we're not mentally ill, you know, we may have issues, but, um, but people like us can buy, and uh, it's not to target those people, correct? Right. Yeah. yeah, the only people that should have an issue with background checks are people who are illegal purchasers, people who have really no right to be buying the weapons in the first place. But and we make it so easy because of the loopholes in the law. Now, some states have good background check bills, and we know that in those states, the incidence of violent crime goes down, fewer police officers are shot in the line of duty, fewer women are shot in domestic violence situations. So we, we know, we have the statistics that show that they work. Thank you so much, Martina, for coming on. Folks, this is a very, very important issue. Uh, we'll have the websites up for all our guests. I encourage you to visit them. I encourage you to contact them. Get informed on this because this doesn't just affect you, it affects your kids and your neighbors. And we'll be right back. I need a job. Necesito trabajo. I would like to speak English better. Me gustaría hablar inglés mejor. I want to be a U.S. citizen. Quisiera ser ciudadano de los Estados Unidos. For over 35 years. Por más de 35 años. The Hispanic Committee of Virginia has been serving our community. El Comité Hispano de Virginia ha estado sirviendo a nuestra comunidad. Job training and placement. Capacitación. Ayuda para conseguir trabajo. Education for children and adults. Educación para niños y adultos. Immigration, naturalization, and medical referrals. Ayuda para los procesos de inmigración y naturalización y orientación sobre médicos are a small part of what we do. son solo una pequeña parte de lo que hacemos. For help, information, or to volunteer. Para ayuda, información o para ofrecerse como voluntario. Contact the Hispanic Committee of Virginia. Comuníquese con el Comité Hispano de Virginia. Helping everyone participate more fully in American society. Ayudando a todos a participar plenamente en la sociedad norteamericana. Did you notice if you were missing half your kidney function? According to the National Kidney Foundation, 20 million people have chronic kidney disease and 20 million more may be at risk and not even know it. Anyone with high blood pressure, diabetes, or family history of chronic kidney disease is at risk. Early diagnosis is vitally important. To get the whole story, talk to your doctor and visit the National Kidney Foundation at kidney.org or call for a free brochure. Because when it comes to chronic kidney disease, 
you might not know the half. We're back to the Inside Scoop. Here again, your host. Hi folks, Cesar here. Welcome back uh, on the Inside Scoop edition. We are talking to folks that are advocating for sensible gun laws. With me today, we have also um, another uh, activist, Luisa Caro with Moms Demand Action. Correct, did I get That's that right? right? That's right. First of all, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, this is a very important issue. Uh, I wanted the folks to uh, get to meet you, understand your organization. Uh, let's first start off with, you know, why do you do what you do? What, what gets you motivated to get involved? Right, so I think for a lot of people, it was the tragedy at Sandy Hook in Newtown um, almost two years ago in December. And at that point, like so many moms, heard the news and we were just shocked, saddened, but didn't know what to do, really. Mm -hmm. What should one person do? So um, actually about a month after that, I was talking to another mom at school and the topic came up and she had she told me about having joined um, Moms Demand Action and I found out about it. It was founded by a mom mm -hmm. in Indiana the day after Sandy Hook. She created mm -hmm. a Facebook page. She didn't know what to do. She was feeling the same thing as so many other people. Mm -hmm. And uh, that Facebook page has now grown to, in two years, millions of members. Oh. Um, and there's a chapter in every state and I'm in with the Virginia chapter. Great. Um, most people are volunteers. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a volunteer and um, have been working on this issue and learning so much about it. I didn't know anything about gun laws. I didn't know anything about the statistics. Mm -hmm. And the more you learn, the more um, uh, the more interested you become in, sure. in doing something about it. Well, that's true activism, correct? I mean, all of us have the stories that bring us to these issues. So. Uh, at a high level, what are some of the objectives? What, you know, if you could like prioritize them, what's number one on the conversation? Right, so what we'd like to think about is, it's um, kind of like MAD, was Mothers Against Drunk Driving, mm -hmm. uh, change the culture, not just change the laws, but change the culture so that uh, the idea would be to change, to make laws, common sense gun laws, mm -hmm. and also to change the culture. Um, and one of the things that we do is we, go to stores, we go to, we start campaigns with, for example, Target and uh, Starbucks mm -hmm. to ask them to prohibit open carrying of guns, for example, in their stores. Oh, how's um, that uh, been received? So Target has changed their policy, uh, Starbucks oh. has changed their policy, Panera has changed their policy, Chipotle, and these are all... Is here in Virginia? Nationwide. Wow. Nationwide. Wow. Um, and right now we're working on um, the Kroger ba brand of stores, which has different stores throughout the United States. Mm -hmm. In Virginia, it's Kroger and Harris Teeter stores. Mm -hmm. um, we have done petitions. Uh, we actually had moms at their investors meeting. Uh, we have done deliveries. People have cut up their Harris Teeter cards and delivered them with oh. a group of moms and petitions. Um, and really keeping that conversation to make sure that people realize that um, the, these are your best customers, first mm -hmm. of all. Mm -hmm. uh, women, not just moms, but women make 80% of purchasing decisions. Well, and it's 100% so, for me. <laughs> yeah, sure. So if you are a business, it yeah. makes good business sense to mm -hmm listen to your customers and to realize that it's in your best interest, not just to keep your customers safe, but your employees as well. So you're at the grassroots level. What's the feedback when you talk to other people about the issue? What, what sort of, what do you get back in return? Do you get some hostility? You get some empathy? What, what? It don't get, the first thing you get is most people think that the laws are much stronger than they really are. Wow. So the first thing is... So they're not in tune. No, not no. at all. No. And and honestly, I wasn't either um, mm -hmm. because you think that you vote for people and that they're going to keep your best interest and uh, also... Do they understand how, how, and I will call them crazy, the laws are in Virginia? Yes. Th that, I mean, that would scare the average person. I, I don't think people get that. Right. People don't, and I think it's the more I've learned about this mm -hmm. um, over the past 20 years or so, uh, laws have been weakened and rolled back mm -hmm. so that uh, things that people would think were common sense and were maybe still the law really aren't anymore. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, as you were speaking before about the loopholes, 
Um, anybody with any with no ID, no background check at all, no training at all, can go to a gun show or online and get a gun and have absolutely no idea how to use it, mm -hmm. and then also leave it lying around their house, and a kid can pick it up and, and yeah. get hurt or yeah. shoot somebody else. And, and the, the reason I bring up Virginia is, we live here, but it has become sort of the conduit for a lot of the transportation across other state lines. Right. Right. And I mean, people don't understand that that's what Virginia is being known for. It's, it's sort of like the wild east-west of gun ownership purchasing. It's right. just distribution here. And most of the illegal guns that end up in New York City come from Virginia, right. just like the guns that um, go into Chicago come yeah. from Indiana. Uh, they are the easier, and that's where people know that they can get easy guns and go to it. And people don't know it and people you know honestly do not follow their local um they don't get involved in their local politics maybe right. they see what's going on federally and they also give up if they think nothing's happening fe happening federally and then mm -hmm. they don't really follow what's going on and this is something that if you look at the statistics they're shocking and they're you know more kids die from gun deaths than from cancer mm. um, automobile deaths are uh, this year in Virginia going to be less than gun deaths mm. um, and the whole myth that having a gun in your house will make you safer is is marketing I mean yeah. and people think that that is safer but it actually increases the risk three times 300 percent increase that you or somebody you love will be will be killed by that gun right Wow I, I I'm just amazed that um it's such a struggle because it seems like common sense would prevail. In terms of the organization itself, you're targeting, you know, obviously you're, you've got a Virginia chapter. Are there any House of Delegates, representatives, senators, state senators, are they supportive when you meet with them? I mean, do they agree to meet you? What's sort of that interaction been like? We have met with them. There are some very supportive um, senators and delegates um, in Northern Virginia, they are willing to um, continue to push on these uh, bills and and it's the kind of thing that you can't give up. This is a marathon mm -hmm. um, and also the culture will change and also educating people and making people realize that it really makes a difference if you show up. For example, last year was the first year I participated in, um, in Lobby Day in mm -hmm. Richmond and after that had called in when there were bills that were going to be voted on mm -hmm. uh, and in one case we heard afterwards that they got a hundred calls on in favor of a gun bill that we were making those calls mm -hmm. and no calls on the other side mm -hmm. so there's a big myth also that sure. um, that the other side is so much stronger than it really is well in in my view of that is because the other side has a lot of big deep pockets that write big checks so it's sort of perceived that the other side is strong in voices where in reality it's really just the money backing and i think that really determines and influences certain elected officials that they perceive well there's a lot of interest on that side because they're well funded but organizations like yours do you, do you raise money? Do you raise funds? Do you try to, you know, target uh, specific, you know, races? I mean, how, how do you go about influencing? Actually, this year, 2014, we had a campaign called the Gun Sense Voter, mm -hmm. which would be um, anybody who would vote on the issue of um, gun reform, of mm -hmm. common sense gun reform. And we is this got, nationwide? Okay. This was nationwide, and mm -hmm. our goal was to get a million gun sense voters who would, mm -hmm. when it came to the midterm, would vote um, as their primary issue. We got those one million voters, and based on uh, candidate questionnaires that we sent out, uh, asking about support for background checks, asking about support for domestic violence bills, for example, um, we endorsed candidates. And of the candidates we endorsed, 80% won those races. Really? Uh, and wow. so people are really interested in this. And if you look at the intersection, not just with um, safety in keeping kids safe from guns, but also the intersection with domestic violence and guns. There was a Senate hearing, the first Senate hearing 
ever this year on domestic violence mm -hmm. and trying to improve those protections because uh, there's so many loopholes. Again, it's a matter of loopholes where people are in danger. And we were, we were talking earlier about background checks. Uh, in states that have passed background checks covering private sales, 39% mm -hmm. uh, fewer police officers are killed. 38% fewer um, women are killed by intimate partners. And those are real people who are alive mm -hmm. who would not have been alive but oh, for great. those laws. So, so when people learn about it, um, it's not a question of being against it. It's just that people are busy and they have other things going mm -hmm. on and they don't realize it can happen to them until it does. Now, are, are some of your members, are they, are they actually affected? Have they been affected by, by violence? And, and what's that interaction like? I mean, Absolutely. We have, now we have one of the largest survivor networks. Mm -hmm. um, there are people who have been victims of domestic violence, um, who have been a lot of the, um, you know, there's, there's so many ways that people can become victims or families of victims that there is, unfortunately, a huge network of people who now have a support structure because there's other people who have gone through mm -hmm. what they've gone through. Um, and those are amazing spokespeople. Um, and the, uh, the other thing that is true is that a lot of members are gun owners. And responsible gun, gun owners are very important to this. Make great spokespeople, right? Absolutely, mm -hmm. because responsible gun owners know that background checks, for example, make sense. They know how to store their guns so right. that you don't leave it around for a toddler to find and shoot a playmate. Right. And those are the people who sometimes when you see these really extreme gun rights supporters, they're making those responsible gun owners look bad. Yeah. Honestly, they, that is not what the majority of people believe in. Where, where do you think that fear comes from? I mean, just speculate. I mean, sensible gun laws seem common sense, but what, what, what are they trying to protect? What are they trying to avoid? Well, I think a lot of it is, uh, as I was saying, it's marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been um, the NRA and, and lobbying have wanted to sell guns. And so a lot of it is teaching people that you need a gun to keep yourself safe, that you need a gun to uh, keep your family safe, and that's actually not supported by the evidence. Okay. Well, folks, um, Louisa Caro with uh, Moms Demand Action. If you have a Facebook page, please look it up. We'll post all the website information. Folks, this is a very important issue. Please come back. We have a couple more guests. Uh, Lisa, thank you so much for coming thank on. Thank you. I helped turn my child's public school into a whole new kind of school. One with a curriculum that really motivates kids. One that has extended hours, six days a week, year round. With loads of academic, cultural, and recreational activities. One that has support services, like medical and dental, right there. A school where parents' involvement is encouraged. Where teachers have more time to teach. And students are excited about learning. There's just one problem. My child doesn't ever want to come home. You can help turn your school into a community school for excellence. Find out how. Call 1-877-LOVE-TO-LEARN. It's coming right to your neighborhood. And when it does, you may be surprised. It's your Social Security Statement of Your Benefits, and it's going to help you plan your financial future. Your benefit statement will tell you how much Social Security you're eligible to receive and when you'll get it. Then you'll know how much you need to save for retirement because that's coming too. The future is in your hands. Choose to save. The toxic fumes from this meth lab are seeping into Jamie's sinus cavity. Ammonia vapors invade her throat. Toxic gases fill her lungs. Jamie's body is deteriorating. And she doesn't even know it. Jamie? 
Dinner. So, who has a drug problem now? Find out how meth affects you at drugfree.org. We're back to the Inside Scoop. Here again, your host. Hi folks, Cesar here again. Thank you so much for joining us again. Uh, I have my next guest, Gloria Pan, with MomsRising.org. Did I get that right? Perfectly. Tell us a little bit of uh, why you got involved. Tell us a little bit about the organization. Sure, um, thank you for having me here. Sure. Um, I think that um, my story isn't very unusual. We heard it from Louisa um, when the Newtown shooting happened. Um, it was so viscerally moving, mm -hmm. and um, I started crying when I talked to my husband about it over the phone. Mm -hmm. um, and I work for an advocacy organization. I direct campaigns for MomsRising.org. Um, and immediately after the shooting, our members from across the country started emailing us and phoning us, so upset and saying, what are we gonna do, what are we gonna do, what can we possibly do to get involved and try to bring about change so that this kind of thing doesn't happen anymore. Mm -hmm. what, what change have you seen thus far? Um, you know, I think that I might not be the best person to ask about that mm -hmm. because before the Newtown shooting, Moms Rising was not involved in the gun safety fight and the um, violence prevention fight. Mm -hmm. So I don't have a before and after comparison, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I can say that since we joined the fight two years ago, um, the energy around this issue mm -hmm. and the, the awareness, the growing awareness about how this is a public health issue mm -hmm. has really grown a lot. And that gives us optimism that we are going to see some changes to put some common sense laws into place to to reduce the risk of gun violence. And and do you are you talking to the people directly, or do you have conversations with folks? Uh, what are those conversations like? Can you kind of help us understand some of that interaction in terms of what you're hearing back from people? Do you do some outreach? Uh, how's that whole process for you? Well, let me tell you a little bit more about Gun Moms Rising and how we operate. Mm -hmm. um, we are a national advocacy organization mm -hmm. of more than a million members across the country, mm -hmm. and we have um, a social media reach and an online audience of about four million readers. Oh. So, um, you know, when we say things, we do have a community that does listen to us. Mm -hmm. um, we. You know, we have petitions and we have campaigns okay. and we reach out and we said this is what we're working on and what do you think? Can you sign on to our petition? Can you help us deliver it? Can you add your voice to ours? Mm -hmm. And together we'll go to our lawmakers and we will try to make them listen and to do some common sense and to um, put American families first. Um, our core mission actually is family economic security mm -hmm. and that means that we advocate for issues that put the health health, wealth, security, and well-being of American families first. And we bring that to the policy making okay. table and to the process. Gotcha. So when we talk to our members, you know, we do get feedback. Um, you know, our members care about a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. And depending on what we work on, you know, we hear back from them. Interestingly, because we are um, not just about gun violence and gun safety, um, we do actually have um, members who are um, gun owners and um, you know, we have nothing against guns, but the conversation I think that for our audience is, is more, um, you know, balanced. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we try to talk about like what are common sense gun laws and mm -hmm. not, not everything is black and white. Great. So what are some of those conversations like with some of the folks that do own guns when you bring up the topic of, you know, sensible gun laws? Is it, you know, they want to leave the organization or do they want to contribute or do they give their perspective? Help us understand what that um, well, some of our members, of course, are, um, you know, you don't have to say anything. I mean, they were just so moved. That was mm -hmm. a national event. Yeah. You know, when Newtown happened, there was a cry of anguish from moms and other family members across the country. You don't have to explain. If they paid attention and they were crying, you don't have to explain. Yeah. They understand. Yeah. Um, for other people for whom this is sort of faded for them and gun violence is not a big issue for them, yeah. um, Maybe they're not paying very close attention and they just assume that what we're advocating for is 
you know, no guns ever. Mm -hmm. That is not what we're advocating yeah. for at all. We're advocating for reasonable gun laws. Sure. Reasonable gun laws, like not everyone should have a gun. If you have a history of violence, you've been convicted of, viol of, of violent crimes. Mm -hmm. If you have a mental illness and you are a danger to yourself and to other members of society, maybe you shouldn't have a gun. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that those are sensible laws if we can get them. Hansel, so you mentioned the Facebook page. Do you get a lot, because I'm going to go out there and like it, and I encourage everyone else to like it as yes, well. Yes, please do. What are those conversations online like? What's the tone been on some of these issues? Do you all get a lot of like hate, or I mean, is it? We get some hate. Yeah. Um, we get some hate, and you know, some people are knee-jerk reaction. You know, they, they see you say anything about any kind of, you know, common sense regulations for us to, to have a discussion and to yeah. think about things that could po possibly reduce gun violence in our country. And by the way, we have more of gun violence in our country mm. than every other developed country combined. in the world combined. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So, I, you know, it's not a reasonable that to have this conversation. somehow doesn't resonate with people. No, it I doesn't. Well, you know, we, we I think that um, in, our, in our day and age, we, we all have the luxury and also the curse of listening to what we think we want to hear. Mm -hmm. So people on the other side who want unfettered access to guns, who are all about the Second Amendment and they don't want to hear anything else, if they're not listening to both sides of the debate, you know, mm -hmm. their response can be a little bit one-sided. It really is amazing, I mean, just from a intellectual discussion, how binary some people think, mm -hmm. right? I mean, if it's not absolute this way, then it's absolute that way. And I just, I, the reason we're having this discussion is because I think it's important to promote this issue is, is complex, but it's so important that people just need to stop responding, like you said, the knee jerk to the noise. Mm -hmm. Because the noise is meant to keep you confused anyway, Yes. not deal with the real issue. Um, I'm also fascinated with sort of how the organization might target like future campaigns or candidates. Are there, are there plans to, you know, we've got here in Virginia, we've got another election coming up and then obviously 2016 is happening. Are there any plans that you're aware of that uh, the organization is going to put forth in terms of some sensible gun laws? Um, we primarily focus on educating our lawmakers okay. and also the general public and adding to the pu uh, the public conversation around this issue. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of public education to be had, as we just right. discussed. Right. A lot of people are not aware of the nuance. Mm -hmm. They don't care to hear the nuance, <laughs> maybe, but still, it has to, a lot of things need to be said. So we're primarily focused on public education. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's a great start. I, I think um, there are so much misinformation and I think there's a lot of people that take interest, certain special interest group that disseminate a lot of false information about what the other side is trying to do. And it does happen to some extent on both sides, but I think if you're, if you're manufacturing weapons, you're probably gonna promote ideas and campaigns that push that product. Does that make sense? It you? totally yeah, makes sense. Okay. So let me tell you about one of the things that we've been working on, okay. which is the confirmation of Dr. Vivek Murthy to the role of U.S. Surgeon General. Mm -hmm. Now, Dr. Vivek Murthy, who is President Obama's choice mm -hmm. to be the U.S. Surgeon General, he is supremely qualified. He went to Harvard, he went to Yale, and one of the most brilliant men you've ever met, and mm -hmm. so warm and so good-hearted and well-intentioned. Well, um, he was passed out of committee um, on a bipartisan vote. He had bipartisan support and he went to a floor vote and you only need 51 votes in the Senate to be confirmed, right? Well, his confirmation was blocked by the NRA mm -hmm. because he made a comment. He said that gun violence is a public health issue. Now, this is not a controversial viewpoint in the medical mm -hmm. establishment. Mm -hmm. How many people have died from Ebola in mm -hmm. our country? Two, mm -hmm. right? How many people have actually gotten sick from Ebola in this country? maybe seven, mm -hmm. right? How many people die from gun violence in this country? Yeah. 30,000. We were in a panic over Ebola, but meanwhile, 32,000 people a year die from gun violence, yeah. and more than 10,000 children are injured or killed by guns. That, that's just amazing. I mean, those statistics, what is it about our culture, and I'm asking you to speculate here, what is it about the culture that, that we can live with that? What is it that 
that allows us to accept those numbers? You know, I think that that's a puzzle. I think a lot of people actually are not aware that the, the numbers are as high as they are. And um, I think that if you only listen to one side of the argument, you know, it's we live in a dangerous world and we need guns to protect ourselves. And it's true only so far. But if you look at other countries where they have fewer guns floating around, their gun violence is much, much lower. Mm. So I think the lesson here is that people need to be well informed and not listen to one side of the debate. Go find credible resources and take a good look at how the United States is doing around gun violence compared to other countries. Yeah, yeah. Is that something that um, you've uh, discussed with um, you know, either the governor's team here or governors across the, the, the U.S.? I mean, who are you targeting with these messages? Because obviously the Senate's going to be a lost cause for the next election cycle, mm. right? So, I mean, if something's going to happen, it's going to happen at the local levels. So are there plans in place, or do you know of, where um, you're targeting, you know, governors or, or state Senate candidates or, or elected officials? Um, like I said, in general, we, we try to educate the public and mm -hmm. we also educate our own membership because mm -hmm. we're not just about gun violence no, sure. and a lot of our members actually don't really pay attention to it mm -hmm. so we're constantly talking to them and trying to explain you know our position and what the situation is and trying to get them engaged and uh, and that's true for all of the issues that we work on you know we're trying to elevate these issues because we feel that they're really important for the overall well-being of American families um, whenever we do have a campaign on guns, like for example, um, we're pushing back against the idea that gun violence is not a public health issue. Mm -hmm. um, then, yes, very much. You know, we will go to uh, you know Washington D.C. and we will deliver petition signatures and we will talk to lawmakers and, and really point out to them, hey, look, you know, how could you not support you know Dr. Murthy for U.S. Surgeon General when it's obviously a public health issue? Yeah. Yeah, so we do that kind of, of advocacy and education. So you've got the website. MomsRising.org. Mm -hmm. You have the Facebook page, mm -hmm. Moms Rising. Yes. Okay. Um, what do you want people to take away um, in terms of coming to uh, your organization or being interested in your organization? What's what's the one thing you want them to remember? We live in a democracy, and that means participation is really key. Um, you know, we just finished an election, and we saw that. Um, you know, if you don't vote, things happen that maybe you're not very happy with. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one level of participation. But being the kind of organization that we are, we see every day how being able to bring all our voices together and going to lawmakers and saying 10,000 parents or 20,000 parents care about this, you need to do something about it, that is so critical. Okay. Folks, I, I don't know about you, but this, this issue is so important. Um, we're going to keep distributing the information. Thank you so much for coming on the show, by Thank the way. Thank you for having me. And uh, we'll be right back, folks, with our final guest and uh, some parting thoughts. Some dreams are universal. Dreams that inspire us. Multiple sclerosis is a devastating disease that changes lives forever. The National MS Society does more for people with MS than any organization in the world. But we can't do it alone. To get involved, visit us online at nationalmssociety.org or call 1-800-FIGHT-MS. This is why we're here. Because nobody dreams of having multiple sclerosis. What's wrong with this picture? Half of young Americans can't locate economic powers like Japan and India. 20% can't even find the Pacific Ocean. Without geography, our children aren't ready for the world. Geography is everywhere. It's incredible creatures. Rhythm. Fashion. Flavor. 
It's economics and politics. It's change. Understanding connections between people and places is critical in the 21st century. That's why we created MyWonderfulWorld.org. Go there now for your free parent and teacher action kits and give our kids the power of global knowledge. Because kids who understand our world today can succeed in it tomorrow. We're back to the Inside Scoop. Here again, your host. Hi folks, thanks for coming back for our last segment. Cesar here, your host. We're gonna finish up this segment with uh, my final guest, Ben Zul. He's with Concerned Citizens, Citizens Against Gun, Gun Violence. Back. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. What, um, what got you involved? Well, what got me involved immediately was like Gloria said, uh, it was Sandy Hook. Mm -hmm. But I had an experience when I was seven years old the, uh, my, quote, girlfriend crossed the street. Uh, I was, we were in the kitchen playing. Her mother went upstairs to uh, see to her younger brother. And uh, she said, here, help me with this. And we moved the chair next to the refrigerator. She got up, got down a box, took it to the table, and then pulled out her father's service 45 that he brought home. And, uh, he, and she said that she was going to shoot me unless I kissed her. And at seven years old, I wasn't going to kiss a girl. Oh, wow. And uh, fortunately, her father had the safety on and she couldn't turn it off. So. Oh, my God. But other than, you know, if that hadn't been the case, uh, I wouldn't be here speaking to you now. Wow. So it's always been uh, something that's on my mind, but what activated me was... Uh, Sandy Hook. How many folks are uh, in the organization? In our organization, it depends whether you're talking about active people or people who get our emails. Nationwide, if, activists, statewide. I mean, what, it, in concerned citizens. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, we're we're only a state organization, actually, okay. a Fairfax County mostly organization, okay. and uh, we have uh, 670 people on our mailing list. Okay. Right? Are they um, are they fairly targeted? I mean, do you have like some some goals, some uh, some elected officials? What's the message? What, what are you trying to accomplish here over the next? Well, 12? that we're concerned citizens and mm -hmm. we're trying to make life safer mm -hmm. for people in Virginia, and specifically in our part of Virginia. How's the message and, being received? Uh, I'm not sure it's being received. Yeah. Um, it's hard to break through all the noise mm -hmm. to uh, get the message out. We try to, we, well, let me tell you when after Sandy Hook, mm -hmm. um, some of us sent out emails almost immediately that kind of crossed on the internet saying, we've got to do something about this. Right. So we got together and decided to find out more about the issue and what was being done. So we sent out an email to people we knew and said, uh, we're going to have a some people who are knowledgeable on gun violence and mm -hmm. prevention, and uh, we want to hold uh, an educational meeting. Would you like to come? And pretty soon it became apparent that there were more people who wanted to come than we could fit in any living room. Mm -hmm. So we got the uh, middle school cafeteria and had 138 people show up. Wow. And uh, we had... Uh, Martina, who was here earlier, actually was one of the speakers at that. And we learned a lot about uh, what was happening nationwide and in Virginia. Were people aware of how wacky Virginia's laws are? I mean... No, I bet you they're not. Uh, well, let's talk, let's yeah. enlighten some folks. Let's talk about a couple laws. Um, there's a bazooka law out there, right? I can go... Right. And purchase a bazooka now, right? I mean, that's well, pretty not much right. quite. HB yeah. 878, I believe it was, okay. is a bill that would allow, would tell local law enforcement that they only have 30 days or 40 days to uh, clear somebody who applies for a dangerous weapon such as a bazooka, landmines, um, uh, rocket-propelled grenades, 
all the so, machine guns, they all fit into that. So folks in Virginia should know this. there's a 30-day... Right, and that would have changed the law to be um, from where it is now, which is essentially as long as it takes for local law enforcement to check you out safely. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, that law did not pass. Mm -hmm. It passed the House of, Repres uh, of Delegates, um, but Which is Republican controlled. Yes, okay. 67 to 32, mm -hmm. I think, 68 That's to 32. That's a veto proof, isn't it? Yes, it okay. is. All right. And it's got beaten the uh, Senate by, I think it's stalled in committee there. Yeah. L let's hope it stays there. Right. Um, Although this new Senate now is... Uh, <laughs> now okay, that's a different show, different right. topic. <laughs> um, so what are some other wacky, wacky laws that folks in Virginia should be aware well, of? Well, right now, uh, you can, without ever owning or handling a gun, you can go online and get, quote, training, safety training for carrying a concealed weapon. So I just watch some slides and watch you a video. Watch, yeah, and, we'll and answer five or six questions okay. and pay your $58, I think it is. How do they know I'm me? How do they know? Um, you have to go in and do the, uh, um, the application, mm -hmm. but the part of it where uh, that's the requirement for uh, that you have been trained to safely handle the gun can be done on the internet now without actually handling a gun. Uh, Andy Goddard of the um, Center, Virginia Center for Public Safety has never owned a gun or handled one, and he got his concealed carry permit in Virginia last year. Wow. So. Wow. <laughs> I'm, I'm speechless. <laughs> so, um, and, and they don't verify age? They don't verify? They verify who you are. They do a background check. Okay, well, that's good. But they don't do a check to see that you actually are able to handle the gun without killing people accidentally or, or yourself. yourself. Right, okay. And uh, that's Virginia. <laughs> what, what are some other wacky, and folks, by the way, if you're voting, these are the things you're voting on. I mean, it's important to ask the uh, candidates and the elected officials if you're going to support them, and this is an issue. These are some of the laws that are going through the House of Representatives. What are some other wacky laws? Well, in 2012, uh, the legislature, um, uh, knocked down the law um, that w we had that would allow people to only buy one gun a month, mm -hmm. handgun a month, and because you need to buy one every week, of course. Okay. All right. Now Virginia is number. If there's a crime committed with an illegal gun in New York, most likely it was bought in Virginia, mm. uh, and the, we are the number two, I think, in the nation now in terms of guns that were illegally uh, used in illegal actions outside of Virginia. Wow. And, uh, well, I'm sure people are proud of that uh, designation. Oh, yeah. So, what, what, um, what's, what's next year's election going to look like? We, we've got some, uh, some state races. I mean, uh, are, are you guys targeting, hopefully, some of, these, uh, some of these folks that might be on the fence? Well, there's not much of a fence. Uh, mm -hmm. The Republicans, there's maybe three Republicans who, maybe four or five who have actually voted for public safety on one or two bills, while all the rest of their bills, of the their votes on gun safety have gone in the other direction. Uh, mm towards more guns anywhere for, with less responsibility. What do the Democrats look like these days? Democrats are mostly for um, safer gun laws. Uh, there's a few in the House of Delegates who are with the Republicans. You want to call that. them out? Here's your chance. Um, <laughs> Send me a letter, I, I'll call them out. Okay. How's that? Okay. I can tell you in the Senate, we've had trouble getting um, Senator um, John Edwards to uh, vote for background checks even. It's just close, simple background checks. Yeah, to close the gun show loophole. What, what's his mm -hmm. rationale for why it's not necessary? I, I don't think he has no. one except that he's, uh, he says that there's parts of his district that it would hurt his uh, cause. Right, he'll, he'll, uh, he'll be getting a call from me. Okay, good. 
What uh, um, we started up a website called uh, Senator John S. Edwards D N R A, and uh, okay. so people should go out and like that website. Okay. That uh, Facebook page, rather. Okay. What is that again? Uh, Senator John S. Edwards D V uh, D dash N R A. Okay. All right. We'll uh, we'll put all yeah. this up at the end of the show. What are some of the other? Um, do you guys, by the way, do you raise money? Do you do you target? Uh, uh, no, we don't. So. We're uh, totally volunteer. Mm -hmm. uh, none of us get paid. We all uh, volunteer our time. Yet we manage to do things like uh, last year uh, in 2013, we knocked on 10,000 doors in the 10th congressional district mm. uh, with a petition asking. Uh, Congress and both uh, to support universal background checks and assault, uh, assault weapons ban and a limitation on ammunition and clips. Mm -hmm. And we had just a little over 3,000 conversations from those 10,000 knocks and uh, had 2,684 signatures on the petition, which shows how popular that really is, even in parts of his district that you wouldn't expect it to be. Well, there's a, a lady by the name of Barbara Comstock that's going to be sworn in. What's, uh, what's her view? What's her record been like? Her record has been the exact opposite of public safety. Mm -hmm. She has voted for more guns in more places with less responsibility every time. She voted to repeal the one gun a month law. She voted... When she was in the when state she was in the uh, house. House, right. Okay. She voted for that bazooka bill, uh, and uh, her vote... So she's okay if we walk around with, with bazookas uh, up and down apparently. the plane? Okay. Yeah, apparently, okay, yeah. Okay, so maybe we, uh, we can talk to her about that, why, why that's necessary. That would be a great... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just, uh, a bazooka, I don't get it. Ben, thank you so much for coming on, folks. Um, it's an important... Uh, can I oh, say absolutely, something sir. else? Yes, we also absolutely. do things like go to the NRA headquarters on the 14th of every month, the anniversary of the Sandy Hook killings. And mm -hmm. uh, on December 14th, it's uh, the two-year anniversary, and we'll be there. It's a Sunday. We'll be there at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and everyone is welcome to join us. And there's a Facebook page out there. There's a Facebook page okay. and a website, yes. Folks, uh, please... This issue doesn't just affect your community. It affects the county, our commonwealth, and the country. So if you're not moved by what you've heard this evening, I encourage you to visit the websites. Get to know the organizations, get to know the issues, and get involved. Because this affects us all as, as a country. Um, we need to change the culture that this is acceptable. I want to thank all my guests and certainly thank you for joining us this evening. We'll see you next time.